there's a protocol out there called the Bredesen protocol. Mm -hmm. I know you've mentioned it before <laughs> yeah, on your yeah. podcast, Sean. Yeah, yeah Dale Bredesen, yeah. Uh, yep. Practically everyone who comes in, I talk to the family and say, can we try this? And 90 plus percent of the family said, no, just let's just deal with what they've got. I finally had a family say, yes, that sounds great. Let's do it. So we've been working on that since I think late October, they moved in. We contract with the Apollo Health Group, and I'm actually paying for some of it because I it's an investment for me. Because to me, if if it works, and I don't know if everyone's familiar with it, but it's a protocol to actually reverse dementia or Alzheimer's. And we've got a lady who's got mild cognitive impairment, and she's on it. We've got... I, I, I'm working with another company, like you start with the Apollo Health Group, the official Bredesen one, but they want you to work with a doctor or health coach certified in it from another company or on their own to do sort of a long-term ongoing coaching program. So we work with a company called the Mind for All Seasons up in Idaho. We work, talk virtually and stuff. They gave us a big roadmap. There's a whole bunch of things you got to do. One of them, the Bredesen Protocol calls for a ketogenic flex 12 3 diet which is basically a ketogenic diet with 12 hours of fasting every day to help keep the blood sugars down and not eat three hours prior to dinner but bredesen is very much into plant-based they they even say they want meat as a condiment not as the main course mm -hmm. um, to have small amounts and they'd recommend a gram of protein for every kilogram of body weight a day is the company I'm working with is much more open-minded. And I said, this carnivores, you know, the idea is to have low carbs. The carnivore does that. And they said, they actually said, there's a lot of research that says for older people, a lot of protein is really good. There, there's a condition called sarcopenia mm -hmm. that is basically your muscles wasting away as you get older. It starts affecting you in the, your fifties. I'm a victim of it probably, but the protein's going to help them maintain that muscle mass and maintain their metabolism. So we're, we're making advancements with her too. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see, you know, you could run the Bredesen protocol side by side with, you know, and you'd have to divide up different residents and, and maybe more of a carnivorous protocol on the other side and see what your results are. Because I mean, obviously I'm biased, but I suspect a carnivorous diet would, would be superior, but you know, again, I'm not an Alzheimer's researcher, but a lot of old people have issues with dentition and this can be a problem. You know, they don't have dentures, they've had half, you know, half their teeth are gone a lot of times. So they have a hard time. Some people complain chewing. And so how do you, have you had run into that issue yet? And how do you propose to get around that if you do? We do. Um, so what we do is we grind up the meat and water and sort of make a stew mm -hmm. and, and we get them to eat it that way. Uh, we also feed them a bunch of fish, salmon. We do the, the smash fish, salmon, mackerel, anchovies. Um, I forget herring was one of them and I forget what the other one was, but we mostly do, uh, salmon. We do some oysters, things like that, that give a lot of protein, very low carb, lots of nutrients and, uh, easy to chew and, and eat. We get various reactions. A lot of them don't like the oysters, but they'll eat the salmon mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And, and just to real quick on the cost, yes, my meat is is more expensive, and I'm going through some meat brokers and finding some local places that'll sell it to me in bulk. But I look at it as every every month that I don't have a bed filled is three to five thousand dollars that I'm not taking in. And every month, every time I get a bed filled or 80% of the beds I fill come from referral agents who I have to pay them a month's worth of commission to fill that bed for me. So every month that my residents stay alive, I'm saving thousands of dollars. And the difference between that and maybe a couple hundred dollars in the food budget, you know, that's quite a return on investment. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and and let me ask you about, because, you know, you mentioned that, you know, in seven years, you've had six people go home. I mean, what, what do you, what do you have, what happens when, particularly when you're dealing with these morbid obese people, which the goal would probably be, the whole point would be to get them, get them out of the facility, get them out of assisted care, return them to normal life, supposedly. You know, if this, if this gal you've got this down to 415 drops down to 250, 
or something or under 300, she certainly should be able to go home. I mean, there's a lot of people that are functioning, you know, not optimal, but they're certainly not requiring assisted care at that weight. So, uh, does that, pro is that a problem for you? Cause I mean, a lot of people say you're putting yourself out of business by, you know, <laughs> I mean, there's probably a never ending supply. Unfortunately, we have a never ending supply of sick, you know, certainly old people. I mean, there's always going to be old people, but I mean, as far as these morbid obesity, does that, does that concern you at all? Or is, or is it just make you feel better when you get them out of there? So, so a couple things on that. First of all, the demographics are very much in my favor. All the baby boomers are hitting the assisted living age and that's going to go on for 20 years. So. They, they call it the silver tsunami in our industry that's hit him. So there's going to be plenty of people. Secondly, I'm a huge believer in give the customer what they want. And practically everyone who comes into my assisted living home, I mean, I could have the most gorgeous homes on earth. And they say, I don't want to be here. I want to go home. And over time, they adjust and realize we're making all the meals and, you know, helping them bathe. And all of a sudden, it's really nice here. But they really want to live at home. I want to live at home the rest of my life. My parents have told me, don't ever think of sticking us in your homes. So to me, yes, I'm maybe going out of sending my customers away. However, to me, if I have a home that says you can stay here for six months and then go home, I'm going to have no end of business, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. I think so. I mean, what is, I mean, just the landscape of assisted facility, living facilities, nursing homes, is it growing in scope? I mean, or is it more of a more of them growing? Is it a growing industry? I mean, we're getting more people that need this and particularly at younger ages. Yeah, I think definitely. And I, I think the younger ages, it might be a little harder sell unless they're really disabled or something because they're, their parents are going to want to take care of them. They're going to have more of a support network, but the industry is definitely growing. I mean, like I said, the baby boomers are all retiring, so it's getting bigger. But I think a lot of people are, a lot of people in this industry are big investors that own hundred bed facilities and things like that. Each of my facilities are only 10 beds. They're basically a residential home converted into an assisted living home. I guess the derogatory term is group home. But, you know, if you drove by them, you wouldn't even know they were a ho an assisted living business. They just think it's a home in a residential neighborhood. So a lot of those investors are just looking at ROI and they're looking at cranking in people, you know, having them stay low food budgets, whatever. I've seen homes that, you know, it's ramen and peanut butter, jelly, most meals. And, and it's just, it's sad really that I, I think there's this awful feeling of once you're here, you're, this is the last place you're going to live for the rest of your life. You know, we're just going to make you comfortable. And, and that's what you see with hospice. You know, there's a big push to get people on hospice and it, it's sad. We, we've had people come in on hospice, a lot of them, that we graduate them from hospice. We get them well enough that they don't no longer qualify for hospice. Now, eventually, they're probably going to go back on it, just age. But, you know, hospice to me is a challenge. And, and I see hospice as, you know, another growth industry. But to grow, you got to put it on. And hospice, it's, it's illegal to cure people. Like you can't try to make them better. You can only make them comfortable as they're, you know, have some terminal condition. In fact, hospices discourage you sending people to the hospital when they're in trouble because you have to take them off hospice to go to the hospital. So, okay, I can't do it through drugs, but no one cares what I feed them and that I can make them better. And I also hired a personal trainer that exercises with my residents five days a week. And we see a whole lot of gains with the combination of the diet and the exercise. Yeah, 